We are live. We are live as we are each and every week. Thanks for tuning in. This is OSD episode 297, the original OG sneaker talk show. Man, the Soul Doctors are definitely in the building. Thanks for tuning in. It is Wednesday, 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 the best damn day of the week, and you know what time it is. It is officially March 12, 2014. Man, we're ready. I'm ready. I think we all are ready to say goodbye to Mother Nature's winter. Welcome in spring on the 21st. Man, and then you know what will happen? We'll be complaining of how hot and sticky it is this summer. But don't worry. We will make sure that you walk good, talk good, and more importantly, look good as you do each and every week. And more importantly, 365 days of the year, we are here. So thank you for tuning in. Man, we have a great show in store for you. This is episode 297, like I said, and we're, we're marching, marching on to 300. Man, I can't. Uh, does it say 300 episodes or even does it say 297? It's crazy, but. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Let's get straight to the soul doctor. She is. She is. Flower, flower, flower. I got hey. the power. How you What's doing? Up, What's up to Sonalise? I'm good. Man. Hi, now, Bill. Hey. Working, 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 working. We know some stuff is in, you know, in, in the chamber. We got some stuff on deck. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm steady working in the dungeon trying to create things. There you go. There you go. Let, let people know what the official name is of that um, that tote that popped up about a month ago when you posted it on Instagram. Um, I'm still – there is no official name yet. I'm still ah. fiddling around with it. <laughs> okay. Because there's other things that's coming along too, so. Gotcha. So see, she's got more than one – more than one thing – Coming down the road, coming down the road. Yes. So, yes, yes, yes. And let's go straight to straight to Brooklyn, Mr. Show, Mr. Show, Mr. Show. What's the good word, man? What's the good word? Brooklyn Show. He's making a sandwich. He's making a sandwich at this moment. <laughs> He's getting a glass of wine, a glass of wine. He's putting on his smoking jacket. There we go. Professor Paper, Professor Paper. What's up, sir? What is good? Man, oh, 297. One, soul sister. Um, Brooklyn Show, other disorderlies. Soul Doctor's going to join us later. Um, we're back in effect. Fast track yes. to episode number 300. Like soul brother number one said, we here. Um, we got a lot on deck tonight. I could see a whole lot of um, daggers and Molotov cocktails being thrown at mm. some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight on the show. Um, definitely going to be one for the books. Uh, shout out to everyone who's, you know, always continuing to hit us through, you know, all the social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all those good social media outlets where you know to reach us. A um, whole lot going on, so we got a lot of show to discuss, and um, hopefully people who can't catch us live, they'll catch us a little later, and uh, get their weekly prescribed dose of sneaker debauchery, as we always say. And if you're on Twitter or Facebook or Google+, Plus, um, you can watch the show, and also you can comment on anything you hear us talking about using the hashtag OG. Sneaker talk. Um, so we're ready to get into it. The Brooklyn show is here. Let's see if he's in the building. If not, um, we're about to roll on and get into our stock report for the day. Is the homie Brooklyn show with us? Oh, he's going to miss the soccer ball. He's going to be mad at that. <laughs> but okay, we're going to start off the day. Um, Nike finished today's trading with. 78.97 per share, up 17 cents per share. Skechers finished the day at 34.87 per share, down 9 cents per share. Vanity Fair Corporation finished at 61.33, down 12 cents a share. Under Armour, making a lot of noise these days. They finished the day with uh, the highest gain total on our stock watch list. They finished at 117.42 per share, up 92 cents a share. Um, Decker's Outdoor parent company for Uggs took a hit today, 73.85 per share, down a buck 20. Foot Locker Incorporated 
finished at $45.69 per share, now $0.48 cents a share. Adidas AG on the OTC market finished at $54.12, down $0.63. Cents. Puma AG on the ETR market finished at 270 in euros, 200 um, euros 70 cents, down two whole euros on the day. eBay finished at 57.98, up 44 cents. And last but not least is Finish Line, finished at 26 dollars 93 cents per share, down 55 cents per share, had a downward trend for the day. Um, once again, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or later, every day. OSD, Obsessive Sneaker Disorder. We're the only ones on the internet that cover footwear related stock trading. Again, we encourage you guys to invest. If you want to know how, hit us up info at OSD Live and we'll gladly show you how. So, once again, on Facebook, Insta um, soon to be Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Pinterest, every day, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch us doing our daily stock report. So, that's how it goes down. Money, money, money. What's that? Uh, that top line. Who is? What company is that top line? That's at the very top. And top line top. is. Who, who is that? Let me click on that. Who is that? That is. Ooh, who is that? Oh, that's U A. Okay. That's U A. U A has been. Really trying to stay on top of their game lately, and uh, we're actually going to talk about a couple of their products um, tonight on the show. They are doing their thing, um, and it's the right season is coming for them. It doesn't look like they took too bad of a PR hit from the fiasco with the uh, speed skater uniforms in the Olympics. Mm. So <laughs> they are steady moving forward um, and putting out some really innovative product and such. So. Um, again, you know, for all of you out there, you know, you disorderlies who are watching the show, and you're gonna catch us later. You hear us say it once. You hear us say it a million times. All you need to do is just not buy one or two foam posit Jordan, LeBron, whatever releases, and with that same money, that equivalent, you can take that and start investing online. All right. You want to know how? Hit us up. Info at OSD Live. We can make it happen. All you got to do is pass up two sneakers that you probably don't even really like anyway. <laughs> I don't even think we have to do two. I think folks can do pass on one. One. You know? Like you said, them phone posits. Shoo. Yeah, considering the prices just keep getting higher. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. But, you know, again, once again, you know, not to toot our own horns, but for how many years now? We're the only ones leading the charge in trying to get people to invest and win both ways in sneaker culture and in the athletic footwear business. So by all means, we're here to help anyone that wants to do that um, jump into that aspect of um, the business and win two ways. You can win even when you don't buy shoes. So we hope people decide to take us up on that offer and join us. Um, is Brooklyn Show with us yet? Oh, that must be one mean sandwich, boy. <laughs> that must be one mean sandwich he's making. So, all right. What's your reaction to the stock report today, Soul Brother Number One? You know, the 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 money the money is not funny, but like you know, we've been saying for a long time, pass on a couple pair of sneakers or one or two, own own stock. You know. Uh, we always know, we always talk about, you know, it's nice to own a fresh pair of kicks. I mean, whatever whatever it is, but it's better to own a piece of the company and you can actually pass it on versus watching it deteriorate or, 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 or crumble in your hand or on your feet. So, mm -hmm. you know, just, it's, it's time. It's, it's time for... It's time for folks to get a little bit smarter, not to just be a customer like EPMD said. You yeah. know, you know, you know. You can even, you know, EPMD said it best. Don't be a customer, but also, you know, sometimes you gotta, you know, don't just catch the Bozak. 
because <laughs> that's what's happening. Out all the references. Yeah, that's what's like, happening these days, man. Oh, that's what's man. Happening. You're reaching over the kid's head with that. You better Yeah, stop. see, they, they, but see, there's a thing called, I mean, I'm not even going to go into it, no. Just just look up, get the bows at EPMD, and once you hear the beat, the younger kids will recognize, will, will you know, associate that beat with a newer or a rapper in the late 90s versus us a little bit older who remembers EPMD from the 80s. But nonetheless, oh, yeah. buy some company stock. Buy some stock. Get Only money. The money. Get money. Well, who is Manz what is it, Manzel said? He does that thing. He did that thing like he's like, show me the money. Yeah, okay. So be smart, people. Be smart. Be smart. Yep. Speaking of money. People, get money. Get money. That's right. We got a ching ching symbol for y'all. <laughs> ching ching. But we got a late pass for the rest of the disorderlies tonight, I'm huh? I'm telling you, man. Everyone's hustling, moving, and grooving. But you know what? That's all right. We got to say big shout out to who? Jason Mark, man. This one. Yeah. Like Jason Mark, huge. yo. Congratulations, homie. Jason Mark has been pushing this product, man. The homie has been pushing this product for a good three, four years. Um, and, you know, good news courtesy of the shoe game we see today. Jason Mark Cleaner is now available in nationwide retailers. So, the homie has gone nationwide. So, a couple of locations to mention, such as Robert Wayne and Dr. J's. Um, mm. You can get the Jason Mark Starter Kit, which is a two-ounce bottle of cleaner, and the General Brush, um, retailing for ten bucks. And they also have a mini premium brush that um, sells for six dollars as well. So you can get kitted up nationwide with Jason Mark. Now you don't have to just wait to get to sneaker events or only at particular boutiques. The homie is nationwide. Salute to him, man. Congrats to Jason Mark, y'all. Mm. That's awesome. Word. It's, it's good yeah. to see somebody break out, you know, and finally reach that level of expertise and, and notoriety and acknowledgement and another level for their business. So we just hope he just, you know, continues to grow, you know, rest on his laurels and continue to grow from there, homie. It's good work. So salute definitely to him. Um, that ain't easy, you know. Just take something that you started just, you know, in your garage or your bedroom or whatever, and then, you know, three, four, five years later, now you're sitting on shelves all over the country. That is not an easy feat. So, um, and then you haters who are sitting out there going, ah, oh, his sneaker clean is easy. I could do it. By all means. There's more than one type of soap soap detergent for washing, for washing laundry on the shelf. There's more than enough room for sneaker cleaning. By all means, you go ahead, hater. Let's see you do it. So, it is what it is. Have you guys ever used the Jason Moore cleaner? I still haven't used it yet. I have. I actually used it on a pair of old school uh, Son of Lava Domes. Clean them up. And that were, you know, original, you know, not original, retro pair from like 90, I don't know, 98, 99. Mm -hmm. And they did a unbelievable job unbelievable so I definitely uh, and, and shout out to Jason Mark too who, for helping us out back in August this past August or August of 2013 yeah. he came through and actually uh, sent us a number of kits cleaning kits for the social studies back to school event that was um, that was held here in Worcester Massachusetts right. as a sponsor fundraiser for the social community center so that's right people people are loving it people are definitely loving this stuff that's right. Good work, Jason Mark, man. Word up. Keep rising to the top, homie. Keep rising to the top. Wow. We're going old school tonight for real. Yeah, we <laughs> are. We are. We're in the zone tonight. <laughs> Definitely. We're we teaching them something. Um, so this next story, I got to give a shout out, D. We're really going old now. Oh, wow. I got to give a shout out to MC... Nikki D. Okay. What up, Nikki? Because on Nikki's blog, she ret resyndicated, retweeted the um up uh, wrong window. Let me get out of there. Um, she reposted the story about the homie Stuart Scott, mm. which 
put on on notice, you know, nationwide, the New York Times story and through her people and now through us and all our people. Um, Stuart Scott has been battling, you know, cancer, three serious rounds of it um, over the last few years, since 2007. Um, I had no clue about this. I noticed his change in appearance from time to time, but considering you reach a certain age for all of us, we start wanting to do things to change and look different, get lighter, whatever the case may be, we change somehow. But, you know, I never chalked it up to the fact that he was battling such an aggressive form of cancer that was basically, you know, eating at his stomach and some of his intestines. Um, and this doc, this story that Nikki put up, you know, like I said, as syndicated from the New York Times, is basically an interview with him talking about his struggle. And for those of us who never knew this, Minus a couple of weeks here or there, Stuart Scott has never been off the air. So he's been publicly and quietly battling this cancer since 2007, right before our eyes. Right. Um, that in itself is amazing. Um, I don't know if I could have ever been able to do that. Um, I, was, I was talking um, with someone today. Shout out to my dear product of Kingston. Um, and I, and, and, and I said, I probably would have handled it, you know, God forbid, in a similar way, simply because of, you know, not wanting to stop living. You know what I mean? Right. But to see what he's been going through as chronicled by this story um, is incredible. So I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. For those of you who are watching and you hear us reporting about this, um, it's a New York Times story. Or, you know, you know, if the New York Times story comes down, you could catch it through, you know, our homegirl Nikki D's blog is called social-being.blogspot.com. Um, she posted a story there. And, you know, it, it's a serious deal. So um, for those of you who do not know the relevance of Stuart Scott, he is the reason all of your sportscasters and some of your newscasters from Pick a City USA and in some places in Europe and Africa, he's the reason you heard hip hop infused sports telecasts and news telecasts and sound effects and everything else. This man was the first one to introduce that to that line of work and that profession on air. Um, he was ridiculed by some people at first. Um, People said he was a sellout. People said he was a clown. People said all kind of things about um, mm. his method of sports casting because he was now infusing that which we know, the way we talk, the way we relate to things. He was using that as a medium to now tell the news. And he, he wasn't looked upon as a professional for a while. It took a while for people to really accept that he was not trying to be a clown. He was really introducing a new way for us to be into um, sports yep. and now you see it all across the planet in different languages you know people are using Stuart Scott's style of reporting on news and on sports so salute to Stuart Scott you know we wish you the best here from the OSC crew we hope that you have you know a full recovery however long it may take but you keep fighting and, and we pulling for you bro seriously um, so, D, you said you knew a little bit about what he was going through. I, I did, only because I remember reading a, a couple, um, so back in probably 2008, there mm. was an article in GQ about him, and he, he was saying he was battling some health issues, and again, you go on the internet, you look up, you know, what was, what you could find, and they, they made mention that he had some sort of, uh, of cancer at the time. And everyone who's who's seen Stuart Scott and on television or in person, you will notice that he has a a, a lazy eye. Yeah. Well, the first time uh, they they found something was actually in the eye socket, hmm. and they actually performed a surgery. And he's had you know he's actually talks about in the article how he wore corrective lenses for a while to you know correct you know after the surgery to correct hmm. the lazy eye, but. Then, in, in doing more testing, they found that there was some more cancer in other parts of his body, particularly 
in his uh, intestines and some other his appendix and some other places. Yeah. So um, yeah, he's been battling it, and you could tell. I mean, you could certainly see. I mean, you see it in that article. He's definitely looking leaner and meaner, but it's also because he's been going through chemotherapy, and yeah. and it's just you know what it you know anyone who's familiar with cancer. And has seen someone go through various rounds of chemotherapy. You know how it, it definitely, you know, it's it's a chemical. It's a, you know, there are multiple chemicals, and it does a lot of damage, you know, to fight, you know, the cancerous cells and whatnot. So, he's he like you said, babe, a role model. He's definitely been one of those those people. That a lot of other sportscasters or people who want to get into the world of sports broadcasting have mm-hmm. modeled their career after, not only because. You know, he always talks about, you know, really wanting to be different and speak on air eloquently, but also making remarks to hip hop, to mm. fashion, uh, to uh, I mean, to movies. Yeah. I mean, he'll he'll say some lines. Mix here and there. <laughs> it, it, exactly, and, and just dropping gems, and you're like, man, okay, I haven't heard that line. I mean. Uh, a lot of people who who may not even know that he's also uh, he's also part of uh, Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, so he w- would go back and forth when he's talking back in the day when when um, Shaq became uh, a, a frat brother of Omega Psi Phi. He was giving Shaq, you know, grief on air, mm-hmm. but at the same time he did it respectfully. And some people were like, okay. Some people didn't know what he was referencing, and then there's people who were in the know, like, "Oh shit, here he is, shouting out FIA as well as Omega Sci Fi on air on national television." Mm-hmm. So, you know, he yeah. did it, and he, he had his own. He, again, he had his own style of doing it. So, and he continues to do it, not yeah, past tense. Still, He's still, he is not you know. Mr. Step in in, in yeah. his reporting. He's not, you know, ever been lacking, and you know, again, I don't want to spoil the article for people. This is definitely a good read. Um, please read this. Um, but to date, he has had 58 different infusions of chemotherapy. Yeah. 58. Jeez. Especially if you're a person who's into sports and see him all the time, and then you <coughs> that, you're like, how? Yeah. He's like the bionic man over there. Yeah, right. you know, he's he's trains in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai when he, to, to keep himself strong and, and up the pace, but Again, you know, the T-shirt in the article it says it. His, his T-shirt says, "Every day I fight." So, again, man, yo, blessings to Stuart Scott. We really hope he pulls through. That's Word up. Cool. For real. Did we find real. him on the show yet? Not yet. He ain't coming back. Find out. Find out he over there, you know, having a quickie or something. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he muted us, so he might be over there getting it on us so through his oh, overlay, up, through through his screen screen overlay up. <laughs> like, hey, get yours, most interested man in the world. <laughs> All right, yeah. so um, I need to find this. I gotta find this, D Wells, because we're 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 talking events. So I'll let you go first. We're talking about the um, the Snigger Summit. Milwaukee Summit, by all means, mm-hmm. please go ahead and do the, that. Um, Man. So coming up, you know, Milwaukee Sneaker Summit on March 29th, 2014, it's going down. You know, our homie Kodoma and the good folks over at uh, a, a good old Sneaker Summit are making sure that, you know, folks in Milwaukee have an event that's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to find more information about it, Head on over to sneakersummit.com is the website. Uh, quick and easy, you know, to slide on right on over there. You can purchase tickets. You can um, again, it's opening on Saturday the 29th from 12 to 3:30 p.m. And then your admission also includes a ticket to the game taking place later on that night at 7:30 when the Bucks take on the Miami Heat. So. <laughs> Get your tickets, get your tickets, get your tickets. This is, again, Saturday, March 29th from 12 to 3.30 p.m., the Milwaukee Sneakers Summit. As Kevin Hart would say, well, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) Absolutely. Man. And the next event, which is near and dear to my heart and forever linked to me, shout out to Kevin and Andrew. 
Cleveland Got Soul. Number four, CGS4, presented by Villa, is going down Sunday, June 22nd. They're going stadium status this time. They're doing it at the Quicken Loans Arena. Um, congrats to the homies for bringing it back. They, they space it out just right. They do it basically every two years. So they space it out just right for us. Um, so, again, CGS4, um, Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, June 22nd, 12 to 5 p.m. It's always a good time. Um, I unfortunately had to miss CGS3, um, as you guys remember. Um, the day before, we were all ready to hit the road to go to CGS3. My mom passed. So um, I wasn't able to make it, but I'm definitely looking forward to making this one. Um, so if you guys want more information, um, I'm trying to find the contact information here. Let me see. Pull this up. Um, you can hit up info at clevelandsgotsoul.org. Info at clevelandsgotsoul.org for tables, sponsorship, etc. And the piece that Kevin and Andrew take great pride in, and I have to let everyone know, is all proceeds, all, every single dollar these guys make will be going to the Children's Tumor Foundation. They give away all of the money made and they donate to charity. So, again, salute to those brothers. Every two years they get it on, they do it. We have a good time. It's a nice, chill event. Nobody's taking themselves too seriously. Um, I'm going. Just just sneakers bringing some good folks together. So Brooklyn Show will be there. Yep. Um, I heard he has a pair of size 18 and a half PEs he's going to wear. Indeed. <laughs> we hope to see you all there, man. Shout out to Kevin and Andrew, you know, the Kramer brothers, to Drew, um, and our folks who, who live out there in the city of Cleveland. So info. At Cleveland's got soul s o l e dot org for more info, y'all. All right, Brooklyn Show is back. Hey, how y'all doing? All right, now how are you doing? <laughs> how, how are you doing? You okay? Oh yeah, I'm all right. All right, I'm actually in Jersey. You know, home invasion part three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. all right. That'll that explain the relaxed, the relaxed state. state. Yeah. Oh yeah. So no, um, I just got off the phone with a good friend of ours, DJ Oakliff. Ah, uh, good morning. Good yep. morning, exactly. <laughs> so, I haven't spoken to him so long. I looked at the phone. And I was like, oh shit, there must be an emergency. Man. Let me answer this. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hopefully the homie's okay. Yeah, yeah, everything is good. I asked him was he going to Milwaukee. He was like, yeah, no. But yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I want it. That's like getting Mr. T on a plane in the A team. Oh, exactly. Man. Yeah. I'm trying to see if he's coming out from New York All Star, but he don't know. We need hmm. to get him. We need to tranquilize him and put him on a plane. Yep. So how's everybody doing? We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. How are you doing? Yeah. The question is, how are you doing? I'm Thank doing you. all right. I'm looking at the calendar, so it seems like April is gonna be busy. D, well, we talked about May is going to be busy. May is going to be busy, yeah. End of June now. That was what, June 22nd just now was Cleveland? What was it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much the next couple of months. So so word is that you're doing show IDs, Brooklyn show. Word is you're bringing social studies to Boston. Social studies will be in Boston. It will be. be April 12th, April 19th. April 19th, yes. Along with along the with freshening and your sneaker average. Bag. Yep, along with freshening and your average. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first freshening and your average was actually in Boston, right? That's correct. Yep. That's the one that Lori won? Yep. Yep. That's yep. correct. Yeah, see, so it's K360. Yep. Back in Boston, this time Social Studies is doing it in partnership with them. Um, shout out to Sharik T, our homie Ward Hat. Yeah. Um, so in Boston, we will be introducing social studies in partnership with FTYA this time around. Um, anybody looking for some more info on that, um, 
We're going to have it posted on the website. And also you can hit us up at info at OSD Live. And we will be happy to provide as much insight as possible for all of you folks in the um, greater Boston area that um, want to take part in that. Um, we're looking forward to finally bringing it to the Bean. Um, and we're looking to have a good time with it in conjunction with the FTYA. So once again, as April 12th, um, it's going to be going down. Then April 19th, um, the FTYA um, sneaker event. And shout out to our, our recent winner down in Philly, the homie Rox Fontaine. Shout out to him. You know what? We should get the winners on here. We should actually get a winners on here. Like a Slava Don or a Rock. So, you know, after one of these FTYAs, I have them talk on here. Good idea, Brooklyn Show. Yeah, I think so. And they can show their membership card. I like that card. That card is cool. Word. Yeah. Shout out to Rox Fontaine. Hit us up, Pimp. Um, Rox won with um one thing. What did he win with? Was, uh, Kevin Garnett sneaker? Yeah, yeah, he won with those, um, chrome, those right? silver, very those chrome ultra flights. All right, all right, yeah. Yeah, oh, those, oh. those Nike Town exclusive ultra flights that were off the chain. Um, yeah, so it's gonna go down again and be another winner. Yep. Um, another person taking that trophy home. Flava, you gonna enter? <laughs> What's the word? Come on, why not? You know I'm shy. I just go to into taking the uh, environment. Flower is a pimp that do hair on the side. Mm-hmm. She's the juggernaut, bitch. Flower, I think you can enter. <laughs> I'm just saying, Flower, I think you can enter. <laughs> oh man, our homie Steve G, ridiculous from the ONE, is in the building. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes sir. We hear you in in your in your wireless headphone show off. Yeah, you see you see me testing that out. I press <laughs> the <photos> off <laughs> only to prove that I ain't got no wireless. Take mine off. Hold on, this is how I make mine wireless. This is how I make mine wireless. Let's tuck that under. Wait a second. <laughs> oh man! So what's up, sir? Ah, uh, not much, man. It's been a packed couple of days. Uh, yeah, you got a story to tell. Indeed, man. Indeed, it was. It's been a uh, real interesting. That was a that was a real uh, intense, serious moment for me. Uh, Don't make me and, put and, you up on this screen. You just better go ahead and do it. Don't make me put you on, on the summer jam screen. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> See, oh, I, another the, old school reference. The kicks is in the other room. I don't know if I don't know if the headphones have reached that far. Shall we test it? Oh, All right, no, I'll be right back. Put you on the summer jam screen. I'm put you on the summer jam screen. <laughs> <laughs> you going yeah, on, man? It was it was it was great. Uh, you know, uh, I was able to uh, be honored and and uh, included and inducted into my high school uh, athletic hall of fame. Uh, there it is, summer jam Congratulations. screen. Right there. Congratulations! Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And uh, it was it was a nice moment for me to share and, and, and kind of take the my history and my kickstory out to the world because uh, I I this is a this is a, a semi formal event I'm there with my blazer and bow tie and I happen to be wearing a pair of uh, Asics Gel GT lights uh, which is the shoe I wore in 1992 my senior year when I won my second state title and my coach. Who actually got the shoes for me um, because I, I was I wasn't able to afford shoes for that season uh, was there in the audience and he remembered getting me the shoes he, he didn't remember the exact pair but he does remember my need for a pair of running shoes to train and I told him my first day title was for me but my second one was for him you know it was it was real crazy to be able to share that moment mmm so you all all, all. All, all jacketed up, bow tie. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, real bow tie too, bro. That boy real looking sharp. Oh yeah, I seen the Instagram picture when you had the bow tie on Lucy. Yes, sir. Real yeah. bow tie. That's yeah. classy for you young gents out there. Young, young cats learn how to tie a bow tie. Yeah, I'm good on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep going. I'll keep going to tie rack. <laughs> that shit is hard. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Trust me, the, the, the arms get cramped up if you don't get it right the first time. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't got to sell it to me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, brother. Wait, you took down Wait. the picture? Hold on. Yeah, I, I just took it down a second no, ago. Not that. Well, I'm ridiculous. You took out the picture of your IG. I know you had a picture with the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's up there. It should be up there. Yeah, I kept, I, I kept it up there for evidence. Now, now okay. dear brother, ridiculous. Um, indeed, indeed. We need you to uh, just put back on radar for us because you haven't spoken about it in a while. The the <laughs> people's instinctive travels of connoisseur. Ah, uh, indeed. Uh, a lot of good things happening. Um, we at connoisseur, we were when we were building it. It was it went to market so quickly, like in record time that it feels like it's been going for a few years now and everybody's wondering what happened to it. The truth is, it's been it, a little just turned, it just turned a year old about two weeks ago. And yeah. so while most are struggling through the, the build process and going to market, getting into the app store, we were actually, that, that that's one thing I'm very proud of is that's what I was brought in to do is organize the brand, get things going, and we were able to get it rolling so quickly that we built in a cushion. In that time, what happened was we were able, uh, and we had, uh, Paper and D, we had spoke about this uh, briefly while some things were in the works. Briefly my ass, at length. <laughs> <laughs> we were able to actually wrestle control of Connoisseur from our venture capital partners. So now Connoisseur is owned by myself and my partner Joe Olson of the of the uh, agency Phenom Blue, and so we are now able to move forward in a much more authentic way, uh, with full control of the app. And so um, I, you have my <laughs> yes, indeed. So um, for all of those out there, uh, it, it's been a whirlwind. Allow me to get some things under control, but I promise you that the Android version is on its way. Thank you. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> why? Why? D got to be the only one who can enjoy Connoisseur. Keep <laughs> <laughs> Android over here. Get that's that. that's what you know. That's what we call exclusive. Make sure <laughs> it's, have, it's, um, it's tablet ready to be an exclusive I need it for my tablet too. Oh yeah. The, well, the crazy thing is, um, the, well, the current version is tablet ready for for iOS devices, and so a lot of people who are on Android phones but had uh, Apple tablets. Uh, any iPads or whatnot, it, it was uh, it was ready to go because you just had to hit the hit the times two. It filled in and it didn't really pixelate like some apps did. So we okay. built in the fact that it was tablet ready on the iOS side. But again, admittedly, it was only iOS ready when we rolled out. Um, but we rolled out so fast to get ahead of some things. I mean, we know how how quickly things change in this market and uh, and this genre. And so to get ahead of things and really be the people's champ for apps, which is real important that we got control of, because uh, on the venture capital side, anyone who's dealt with funding knows that uh, at a certain point, it's all fun and games and blue sky ideas, and then they start wanting their money. Yeah, venture right, And they start wanting to know how the revenue is going to turn over. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to build something authentic to a culture, as much as everything is dollars and cents, it, that can't be the forefront if you're trying to be authentic to the culture. And so we, we took some shots for, for, for footwear culture and, and, and footwear lovers all over the place because I didn't want this to be the voice of any other brand. I didn't want this to be monetarily driven by some retail site or location. This was for the people. This was for people to be able to display and catalog their own collection in the way that they saw fit not in a hype driven way. Wonderful. Amen. So I like feel that. Like, you know when that rapper gets his masters, he owns his masters? I feel like that right now for you. That right? that's exactly man, I'm telling you that's, that's a good way analogy. to put it. Like that's yeah. exactly a good way to put it is uh, Jeff Rowe first, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we about yeah. to dangle some people off some balconies, son. Oh man! But yeah, we're looking forward to it. And Disorderlies, oh, watch it now. You're gonna watch later. Please make sure you know you got an iPhone. Check out that kind of sure app. And as the homie ridiculous just said, the Android version, which 
all those of us soul doctors can't wait for is coming because I'm getting ready to do my own version of um, MTV Cribs on that piece. I'm having kind of show. There we go. Kind of show Cribs. I'm showing cars. I'm showing shoes. <laughs> I'm showing jewelry. It's, I'm showing dinosaur be... eggs. Dinosaur eggs. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh. Well like Red Man. <laughs> so all of this shit ever. <laughs> I'm going. You know, never the biggest apps. Watch. It makes it twinkle. It makes it makes it sparkle. Watch. Don't believe me. Just watch. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us, brother. I know you had a busy day. Thanks for having me. I'm here. I'm here. Um, all right, so, D. Wells. Yes, sir. Do we get serious for a minute and talk about some shoes, or do yeah. we spread it out a little bit because we got two WTFs? Let's go with WTF. All right, let's spread it out a little bit. Which one do you want to go with first? <laughs> the one I don't want to talk about. <laughs> yes, let's talk about that one. Let's talk about well, it's, that it's one. Two, it's two we don't want to talk about. Uh, I, I, know the, I know the one that D is on, though. I know the one he's on, too. I'd rather save that one for last, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, okay. let's, let's, let's okay. save that one for last. That's cool. Somebody getting dunked on in that one, so go ahead. Oh. Do another one. <laughs> All right. So, let's do this. Um... We are now entering the WTF zone. For those of you who love our world famous segment, here it is. We're talking on WTF tonight the Nike SB Dunk High PRM Rival Pack, which is available mm. on March 22nd, my son's mm. birthday. How interesting. All right, mm. so. For those of us out there in in you know the internet, shout out to Dallas Penn who hit me up through Instagram today. Um, you might not see anything wrong with this pack at first glance. Right. You might see <laughs> nothing wrong with this pack at first glance. Right. As we scroll through, <laughs> but there is everything yeah. wrong with this pack. Yeah. This so rivalry, pack. rivalry for one one pair is UNC for the Tar Heels. The other yep. pair is for the, the Georgetown, Georgetown Hoyas, good old Catholic Jesuit institution of higher learning in D.C., Washington D.C., yep. our nation's capital. Okay. So now let's have a party with this. Let's let everyone get involved. Um, disorderly. <laughs> Call me first. Call me first. All right, let's let which which shoe you're gonna go with first to destroy the myth and, sh and call BS on this. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go in on the Georgetown. Okay, go for it. And here's why: Georgetown used to be my squad. Yep. And and for those who remember uh, about this particular shoe, or not not shoe, this particular university and what looked like this shoe. First, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. SB and a basketball rivalry pack. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come on, that's what I was gonna say. That was my second, so I'm gonna leave that one for you, show. I'm, I'm gonna skip over that because I, I highlighted that you go in on that. that. Anyone who knows about the Georgetown knows that that shoe was a big Nike. It was not a Dunk. Terminator. Mm -hmm. It was a Terminator. So it had the Nike on the back. Terminator. Yep. It was not a Dunk. At so, all. So all of a sudden, you you for the for convenience. For what purpose you take all that was good about that shoe with that Nike on the back and you just slap it on a dunk? The, the now correct me if I'm wrong. The shoe that actually was this was the the Hawkeye version when Iowa was balling hard. Right, exactly. They actually had the black and yellow dunk. Yep. Well, there was quite yep. a few teams There's in the, the Big East that had dunks too. But the reason why, just to further your point on this, and, and Totally call bullshit on Nike on this. Yes, Nike, we're talking to you. This pack is total bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, and this is one of the things that Georgetown took a lot of pride in. Um, in 1985, 86, correct me if I'm wrong, D, when the dunks started being distributed to the colleges in their own team colors, Georgetown protested against that. Yep. And Georgetown was the only college basketball team, especially at a high level of prominence at that time, that Nike gave their own specific basketball model. 
that being the Terminator because they didn't want a dunk. Right. So why would they give us this bullshit now? <laughs> because they're banking that we don't know our kick story and history. Show IDs. Go in, please. SB right. collection, basketball, right? Yeah. All right, SB is a skateboard sneaker. Obviously, that's what the SB stands for. Why the would a basketball rival be packed SB? Why? Why not just make it regular dunks? You already had to be truly a school dunk. Why exactly. use SB? Exactly. That makes absolutely no sense. None. 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 So I'm a skateboard and basketball rival packed. What? What is the point of that? This is just retarded. Like he said, this is a Terminator. Every scroll up, scroll up. Say again, sir. I'm sorry. Scroll up, paper. Okay. Back up. Forget the fact that these toe boxes look a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is pointless. It's like I don't know who's in control. Who's in charge of SBs? Because it seems like they don't know what to do. And, and here's a, here's another crazy thing. They haven't discontinued the Terminator. No. Oh, yeah, it was, no. <laughs> the Terminator is out there. The Terminator is the shoe that is slept on too. That's a, let's let's talk about that for a second. I like the Terminator far better than than, than the dunk. Yep. Like I said, this is just awful. It's awful. They just know that an SB name will sell better than a Terminator because that's they what it boils down to. When they had to be true to your school, they had the Terminator <coughs> dunks. They had the, what, Georgetown had the Terminators, yep. Yeah. Kentucky had dunks. Yep. Syracuse, um, St. John's, UNLV, Iowa, Michigan. Who else, D? Call the roll. Jesus. There's so many. Yep, but, sir, but D is getting ready to put up show. What? Here's the non-cipher to the entire rivalry. Let me see. Hold on. Put put the put the MJ picture back up, D. The MJ picture. I see that. Yeah. I see oh, this is not. This is um. What's his name? Um. This is Ewing. Oh, that's Sam Perkins right Sam there. Sam Perkins. Okay. Yeah, exactly. See, same point of reference. They're yeah. rolling in the converse. <laughs> UNC yeah. was not exactly. in Mickey's school during nope. the rivalry pack. Exactly. Nope. Michael nope. Jordan wore converse. Yep. Yep. <laughs> The game winner that took that title away from Patrick Ewing and them that year, he was wearing okay. Converse. Okay, now here's one. They do, Does Nike still own Converse? Yes. Yes, they do. They do, which makes so us even dumber. That's what they should have done. That would have been dope. Thank you. Thank that would have been a better pack. Thank you. You want to elevate the other brand that seems to be lacking? Hello. Make it a real rivalry pack because you own them. Exactly. Now, here's the other level of BS to this. Not too long ago, matter of fact, it was last summer, Converse, in a watered-down version, put out the UNC Pro Level. Yep. A very watered net. They didn't do it true to form. They just changed the, the, the color of the chevron and just threw it out. But originally, there was supposed to be a Jordan pack, rumored yeah. from years ago, that was going to be a pro leather and a Jordan. And they never did the pack. Right. It actually was going to be three, three uh, pair of sneakers, because I saw the box, and paper, you probably saw the box, out of good old pencil. Ah, yes, that's it right. Was, and actually, I, I, I have to go digging. I'll find that picture. But there was supposed to be a, a defining moments pack, and mm -hmm. it was going to consist of three sneakers, one of which would have been a Converse sneaker. The yep. two other ones would have been Nike sneakers. Yep. Okay. And one of the big controversies, and this is, I, and shout out to Scoop Jackson for actually digging this up in, um, in uh, Soul Provider. When Patrick Ewing, and I, I'm trying to find a bigger picture of it, but when Patrick Ewing wore the Nike Terminator t-shirt under his Georgetown Hoyer uniform, on the sleeves, you have on the right sleeve is the actual silhouette of, of the shoe. Of the shoe, right here. On both sleeves. Is it on both? I couldn't tell if it was on Nike. Both. Okay, so I remember. It's so funny. Like, and we're talking 1984. Again, the difference between a, a you know a Terminator 
And specifically, John Thompson he supposedly did not. He was very adamant that he did not want to dunk like yeah. everyone else. He wanted a big man shoe because he purposely went out and always recruited big guys, big centers, you know, and he liked the name The Terminator. They were the so. only ones at that time. 84, yeah. like you said, late 83 into 84, so. when that whole process started, and by 84 when the shoes came out. So this rivalry pack of of, uh, of dunks, yeah, I, yeah, we call them bullshit on this one because yeah. it's like, MSU. wait a minute, total MSU. MSU. exactly makes absolutely no sense. Total MSU, and the fact that it's an SB pack, like seriously, like who infuses a college rivalry, basketball rivalry, into a pack of skateboard shoes? <laughs> Total bullshit. Yep. Foolishness. Total bullshit. Foolishness. Thanks a lot for nothing. Total bullshit. <laughs> thanks a lot, though, mm-hmm. Nike. Yeah, thanks a lot, though. As D has illustrated on the screen. <laughs> well, that's show. Yeah, show found it. Oh, yeah, show. There you I'm go. sorry. Brooklyn Show has on go. the screen. Yep, yep. That was the nickname, wasn't it? That Big Mac boy. That Terminator. Oh. You know, they, they, these are all the schools. The running like rebels. It. That's right. I forgot they had the iron. Red Pack was yeah. one yeah. of the best. Mm. Michigan, UNLV running rebels. Villanova. Villanova. Kentucky. Kentucky. Georgetown. Georgetown. St. John. Yeah. This is what St. John used to be called the Red Men. Red Men. Mm. Syracuse. Yep. Syracuse. <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. Yep. So this was 2000 and what, eight? Yeah. Yep. That was about 2008. Yep. Well, Only thing I like is the, the already weathered midsoles. So, so right. why why this BS they just threw out, and 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 the the insult to injury to it for me is you putting this bullshit out right when March Madness. March is Madness. Start. It's done on purpose <laughs> though. Yep. It's, it's all done on purpose. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not disappointed, but I'm disappointed in the fact that they just have the balls to realize that so many people are not paying attention. They're like, oh, they're stupid. Put the UNC colors on that. Put the Georgetown colors on that. Um, call it a rivalry pack, and let's get this over with. And it's like, it's sort of like how it's sort of like how big tobacco thinks. Oh, let them smoke it all day. When they die, we just get another one. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Much. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that that that's the first basura of the night. So we'll save the other one because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some heavy fireworks on the next WTF. <laughs> when we get to that. Like, uh, we, we might have to call in the National Guard to stop what's about to happen with the next WTF tonight. So we'll give we'll give you disorderlies out there a little bit of a reprieve for now, and. Um, We'll we'll take it light and get into shoes for a minute. So first shoe up in, in, in serious shoes, not WTF shoes, shoes shoes for, you know, objective opinion. We're gonna go first with the N B fifteen hundred seamless, courtesy of the homie Ken Griffin Jr. on I G. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy, yeah, crazy. Okay. This is the this is the new technology that New Balance is trying. I mean, we've seen it already, though. I mean, we've seen we've seen Adidas do it. We've seen Nike do it. You know, we've seen even some smaller companies like Sacconi do it. But to, to, to see New Balance roll this out on a fifteen hundred, this definitely caught me by surprise. And I'm telling you, that's going to open up a whole new realm of 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 appreciation for these silhouettes because. With that no seam, with that seamless upper, it makes it a sleeker shoe. And that's one thing I've heard a lot of people say down through the years is how how big and bulky or how much like a grandpa shoe a New Balance looks because of all the overlays and stitching. This is going to slim them out and make them really, really nice. Yeah, the 1500 has always been a um, stereotypically a bulky old man runner type shoe. Always been. But... Um, I mean, for casual wear, it, it's not too bad. If you get ready to go running, then you're going to discover the problem. But if you're just walking around chilling in it with some jeans on, just knocking around, coming from Trader Joe's or wherever, the 1500 is fine. But um, 
And I don't think the 1500 has yet to move out of that stigma of the old man's shoe. So maybe this will help it, especially in particular in that color. Mm -hmm. That color? I like this color. That's mean, that color. Um, and Seamless opens up a world of color blocking changes and good, good, good variations with that Seamless. Yeah, I mean, we've seen all the companies going this way. We've seen it. You know, it's just um, how well it translates to what archive of models of the footwear companies are going to apply it to. Um, Nike's milking it to death with Hyperfuse and Voctec. Um So now let's see what New Balance, what kind of um, mileage New Balance gets out of it um, as well. Um, I like it just based on the color block. I hate that white bottom now. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. That shit, I want to rip that off. Why oh, everybody hate white soul? I'm sorry. I don't mind, dude. That's, that's that old man. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'll take that he one. I hate, at it. I hate <laughs> that white bottom. Like, yeah, I want to rip it off. I'm like, I want to rip that off and just put a gum bottom or something on there. Like, no. Why plain white? Why? Let's go when it's clean. I get it. Whatever. You like white and black anyway, so whatever. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. So no, that's the NB 1500 Seamless. Again, um, props to Ken Griffey Jr. He's on IG. Um, salute to you, homie. Appreciate that. Um, as promised, as the Soul Brother promised, we was going to talk about it on the show tonight. There it is. Um, thank you for putting us up on that. All right. Next, we have, um, oh, released today. Um, Under Armour has been breaking out of the normal realm of mm -hmm. releases and the way that they release their shoes. And we have to give them a little bit of props for that because they are starting to really pay attention to keeping a little bit of mystique and uniqueness somewhat to their shoes. Um, the Anatomic Spawn, which, you know, is their top-notch, top-level basketball shoe, worn by Stephen Curry, Brandon Jennings, and a whole host of others who are under armor now, Kemba Walker, etc. Um, Stephen Curry has a PE version called The Bay, and it released on Under Armour and East Bay today, exclusively there, um, in the actual Golden State Warriors color with the SC30 on the tongue. Um, so a true PE version that Stephen Curry is wearing on the court, released today on East Bay and on UA.com for, for $120. So... These shoes are out today. So for those of you who are high on this particular basketball model and we're looking for a good PE version, um, which they've already made quite a few good PE versions. You have um, Kemba Walkers. You have a couple of Stephen Curry's. Um, Raymond Felton's, which is the color <laughs> which is crazy. Um, these are out, you know. So check uh, Foot Locker as well. Um, for some of those other PE versions, but shout out to Mike Parker, shout out to Ty Foster, um, Ross Klein, um, to Ron, all the folks over at UA, you guys are doing a great job pushing, so this is another good release. Um, and like again, they've been putting it out in a way where um, it's not all over the place and just thrown out there carelessly. It's got some nice exclusive channels for a good basketball shoe that's right now on all of the right basketball players. So. All right. Steph Curry is actually playing right now. I wonder if he's wearing them. Um, considering today they release, um, he probably is. Yeah, there's a big chance that he is. Because that's one of the good things that Steph Curry has been doing is um, in partnering with Under Armour and you know being part of the brand. He's in tune with what's going on with the shoes. So he's been wearing them all at the right time. Like they put out special Christmas editions for um, back in December, and he actually wore them both versions. Hmm. And for somebody with notoriously weak ankles, he's been fairly healthy. He has well, been. Yeah, it's good that you said that 
That's Ever really since leaving the swoosh. That, that's good that you yep. said that ridiculous very simply because um, of the next shoe that we're about to get into, which is right. another UA shoe. Um, Sh shouts to Steph Curry, too. Kick story. I took my kids to Nationals last year. That dude was sitting in the airport in North Carolina, Greensboro, by himself and was mad chill. Props. I, I love it when the stars are like that. Yeah. Now yeah. moving on. Yeah. Now, now you mentioned fit. So our next shoe we're talking about right now, which mm. just dropped last week, is yes. UA Speedform Apollo. Yes. So this is the second generation of the Under Armour Speedform, which released last year to a lot of good acclaim and good reviews. Um, one of the downsides to it was people didn't like the heavy articulation of the split toe. So they kind of scaled that back a little bit. And gave the shoe more of a traditional form, but they do have the you know foot you know um, the mm -hmm. structure references on the bottom of the shoe. But if you see on the top of the shoe, as illustrated here, um, it, it less of the split toe. Yeah, um, the shoe is clean. Um, it comes in some special packaging, as you see here. They've been doing some great commercials with it too. Um, I've seen this shoe in person. One one major thing they did. Mm -hmm. Um, they double stacked the uh, micro G mm -hmm. cushioning. That was another uh, complaint that they had gotten, and I know locally with some of the running clubs and things, the Toxic Six is a good looking shoe, but it's paper thin. There's not enough cushioning in that micro G mm -hmm. when it's when it's that thin layer. But they double stacked this one, and it's great. Now another tie-in to what you were saying a little while ago about fit. Um, one of the reasons Under Armour has been very successful with their latest. Um, push your footwear over the last year and a half is because of the emphasis on fit, on the actual personalization of the fit to the wearer. And they took that to another level with this shoe because this is a shoe that is actually not made in a footwear plant. This shoe is actually made in an apparel plant because that's how serious they wanted to take the fit aspect of the speed form apollo. That's right. So just to tie into a, a episode, which I can't recall offhand, that we reported on a shoe Under Armour put out a while ago that was made based on the architecture of a bra. Um, Under Armour continued with that, with this shoe, and they made the shoe in an apparel-based factory instead of a footwear-based factory for this one. So... What's Again. funny about that paper is uh, I was actually at the store with one of the young ladies that I coach, and we we talked about that. We we actually she actually held the shoe, and I made mention of the bra aspect, and you know, true to a little high school girl, she kind of freaked out a little bit. But then she goes, "It does feel like I'm like when you get that kind of reaction, that's pretty interesting." Yeah. So because they know firsthand. <laughs> the, the the don't laugh. <laughs> your flowers over there, like yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy with the bras. Don't tell me about bras. <laughs> <laughs> tell me shit, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but um, you know, UA in in taking this approach with um, really using the fit of footwear as a strength for them and trying to find different ways to produce it. Now, I, too, have also, I haven't put it on foot yet, but I've also went, I went into Foot Locker and, you know, kicked the tires, if you will, on this shoe um, just mm. the other day. And I actually really, they look good, number one, in both colors, the blue and the black. They look really good. I can't wait to own a pair for the summer. Have you um, seen the Volt color? Or they're, I'm not sure what they're calling it. I, now, you want to laugh when I say this. The vault color was there, but I just couldn't get high enough to reach it off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, laugh, that was the short one. Laughing says, laughing says the 6'2 Olympic world-class athlete. <laughs> laughing. That's my fault. I'm sorry. I no, wasn't. I, I threw that out that. there for a reason because it was truly fun. Like if you were with me, like when we doing the sneaker tour, you'd be like, "Oh, I got that for you, babe." <laughs> I would have let you get it. I would just tipped it off for you. 
You would have gotten an assist. So I truly couldn't reach it, so I saw it up on the shelf up there like, oh, that's the other color. <laughs> oh, is that official packaging or that's just press? This is promotional packaging, which I believe is limited to the first 100 pairs that sold. Yeah. So, yeah, this is promotional pack, which is crazy. It's got, like, a jet USB. Yeah. Um, it's dope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, they did and a great their, job. Their store, their store displays are sick. Like, that jet display with the laces coming off of it, that thing is huge. And it's, it's, it's a nice little setup. And then on the Volt pair, again, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Under Armour, I'm not sure what color you're calling that. But on that that hyper color yellow, uh, they have a running mannequin set up, and he's got a hat. And on the shirt, it's a, it just says "Sick Kicks" on the back. And so they're using both the technical aspects with the fit and everything. But they're they're knowing that they want people to tie this in with the with sneaker culture because they're using the lexicon. Yep. And and these shoes just flat out right look good. You know. They do. It's taken a long time for us to really say that about a normal yeah. shoe. We've been saying it for the last couple of years, but the prior three or four, we beat them with a wet noodle every chance yeah. we got. Yep. Yeah. This was a game changer for them in the fact that, like you said, it on shelf, it looks good. Their other ones, even you know the spine and some of the other things, it's just it was hard to get behind them and, and, and take them with any kind of degree of seriousness. Yeah. Uh, this one looks like it's ready to do business, and they could seriously drop a few SKUs and focus on on this and and maybe another couple models. Pair the here I go give now nah, I ain't gonna give it away too much. <laughs> call call me Under Armour. I got some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't, don't give it away. Ty Foster, no. Mike Parker, Ross Klein. Serious biz, man. Um, I got I got I got all types of plans. Oh y'all over there, get at us. We want to kick the yep. Willie Bobo. It's good. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, talk about Ridiculous, before we move on, talk about that heel cup, though. Because mm. that's, that's new for them, too. Yeah, what they what, what it is is, let, let, first I'll highlight what most heel cups are. They are usually hard form, some sort of plastic, some sort of cardboard internally, and then stitched over, which traditionally causes blisters because it's multi-parts, the stitching, the type of foam. What they did with this, again, here is where I, I definitely uh, trusted some of my own experience. And then the experience of a young lady who wears bras far more often than I touch them. The, the heel cup is built seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it, there's nothing to make a blister. There's nothing to rub. It's literally like a second skin. And then above, on the rim of the uh, of the heel cup, right up near the ankle, pa there's no padding. Uh, so there's nothing. To, there's nothing said, bulky. He said rim. Oh. <laughs> he said rim. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's uh, there's a little bit of grip. There's a little rubberized grip for for uh, for holding your heel in place. And then the actual heel counter is external and attached to the the midsole. So it is a truly seamless heel cup, and I think uh, they're billing it as the first of its kind. Um, I, I think they might be right. I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely makes for a comfortable fit. Mm -hmm. Show IDs? Is he there? No. Flower? Yes. Can we get you a pair of these? You rock these? Yes, I would. Find me a size six. Proudly, that blue too. Royal blue is my favorite. You, uh, and trust me, that blue is electric when you see it. It's it's, it's hotter than even just the pictures can tell. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's a dope blue in person. It really is. Yeah. And and the black, the black, the black shoe looks really good too. The black is ill. I, the I black thought is about, uh, with what other color? Black uh, with that with an orange on the bottom. So like yep. a a safety orange foot, like the foot pads are safety orange, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, shout out to Big Cat for checking in. We see you on Twitter. He always holds us down. DMV area stand up. Um, yep. So that is um, the speed form of power. All right. So okay, we did both UA shoes. 
We got the NB1500 Seamless. Now, I don't know where we're going with this one. I'm just going to put it up for y'all and let y'all have that. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are going to have to say about this one, but... Is it another WTF or? No, it's not another WTF. It's just an interesting twist. I can barely see it and it looks like it. It's an interesting twist on a shoe that looks, um, that that was already doing well. So here we have the KD6 Elite Team version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. D, oh. I, I, will take, I will take your next WTF over this shoe, bruh. <laughs> really? All right, I'm absolutely. Okay. I never like any KD sneaker. They all look ugly to me. Every single one. I I like the new ones, but why would they do this? I'm a big fan of the KD four, which I was never able to get a pair of the ones that I really wanted because it was the first colorway that actually dropped, and it flew. Of the KD four. Um, other than that, I'm not a fan of. Um, well, I can't really say I'm a fan of his high top version either because I don't like that KD five at all. But wait for the lifestyle, the KD six elite <laughs> lifestyle. Watch. But this this shoe was already doing fine without the tweaks, without this yep. elite version, and now they do this. So I'm gonna let y'all have at it. I'm just gonna be scrolling through images so that y'all can see. That sucks. <laughs> it's ugly from every angle. <laughs> I don't own a pair. Um... Now, from the angle that I have it on screen, does this not um, give you the feel of a running shoe? Yeah. Well, ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is definitely not... This takes a um, special somebody... Aficionado to actually wear this one. You I'm have just... to really be a KD fan, like yeah, you a do. collectible or something. Remember but what what I don't understand is again these things are also built and marketed in certain silos. Right. Why would they Why would they take steps to give him a LeBron low? Exactly. Because that's what this it's is. It's confusing. It's confusing, folks. Absolutely. Yeah, well... How much I'm not a fan of the visible zoom air unit on the bottom. I haven't been a fan of that at all, anyway. Um, but they put so much of it. They put so much of it. It looks like a Max Air. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, mm -hmm. to, to put the clear window on the zoom air cushioning and then to spread out the zoom filters the way they have now, so that it looks reminiscent of air. I just think that was really gimmicky because zoom air has always worked on its own in its original form. Yep. Um, it's it, it was air Max. And it was How never meant to be seen. I was just about to ask that question. How much is this sneaker? Um, it comes out April 11th on Nike.com. Um, hmm. No okay. price info here is listed on Sneaker Freaker. All right. Um, shout What's out to Woody. Oh. Was good over from uh, Down Under. It's the birdie. They're going to get you. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're gonna build this as a max unit. Watch. Yep. They're going to build this as a 360 unit, even yep. though it's a double stack zoom. Watch the birdie. Oh, no, they, 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 do, they do list all of the Zoom shoes like this as Zoom. They don't say Air Max. No, what but. I mean is what I mean is from a from a retail standpoint that we we know that. We get that there's a difference. And they do bill it. They say Zoom Air, but they've made it visible. Right, they, they made it visible for a reason to confuse you. Right. And so they know that they could charge now the 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 lesser discerning customer. A 360 price because it looks like a 360. Yep. So this shoe is easily going to be a $200 shoe. Pay attention, kids. $200 for this. And 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 not for nothing, but weren't we off of exposed fly wire like this? Yeah. Weren't we off of this? Like, like I said, they gave, they gave him a LeBron low. That's it. Just a revamp LeBron. They just turned the, the tongue on the side, and that's it. Yep, $200. Too similar. Too similar. $200. $200. Do you think that's what the retail price will be? No, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Show, show wow. found it. I guessed it, but he found it. $200. Yeah, yeah. $200. Wow. Let me go to $200. $200. $200. Yeah, that's what they say. $200. $200. Yeah. Two hundred dollar. 
<laughs> Boy, your grades yeah. wasn't that good this year. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all see it? Yes, sir. This is on Soul Collector. The KD6 Elite launches in April for two hundred dollars. At least three different colorways will hit retail throughout the month. Mm. Yeah. That's bad. Wow. Two. Let's see if we can find these other colors. Hold on. Now, mind you, this is the gentleman whose shoes started at eighty-eight bucks. Right. Six now, was it eighty-eight for adults also? Yes. Get out. Well, eighty-eight oh, was the adult price for kids. It was cheaper. Oh yeah. God, this thing is hideous. Wow. 88, oh, wow. 80, 88 was that try-hard price. Now that you a star, that all changed. Yeah, that looked like a, a hideous garden snake. Do y'all see where it's all crinkled right here? Like, yeah, yeah. That? yeah. That's, that's all. That's the flower wire madness. I know, here. but let me make that bigger. It looked like a Ooh, snake I, ate a possum. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, get it. Uh, I wish it I had two hundred dollars for that. I wish I hadn't seen it. Like I said, what what was that shoe? Uh, it was the LeBron Low two years ago. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> it's a LeBron Low with a switched up tongue, just like just like uh, Flower said. Whoever yeah. took this picture needs their cameras too well because I can see where the glue is coming off already. <laughs> wow. That's wow. Wow. So. Hey, man. Well, like I said, I, I put I put it there close to a WTF because I wasn't sure where it was gonna not, be. This is it. All the way WTF. Issues like these though, that's that's why you see so many twelves making the court again. AJ twelves, <laughs> man. Some good old fashioned leather. <laughs> Cause somebody gonna blow this shoe out. Yeah. Um it's tough that his shoes have skyrocketed so fast up to the $200 price point so quickly. It's amazing to watch. That's a little bit disappointing, too. The KD-1, because... which which I actually liked. I actually liked the KD-1, and um, I have a pair of uh, Montrose Christian PEs, which was his high school in Maryland. Um, they released those at House of Hoops. Um, that shoe was $88. And now we're looking at eighty-eight dollars. We're looking at a shoe from him for two hundred dollars. That's what that's what's disappointing is KD is quite likable, and and even in the marketing of KD, they they played up on that a couple years ago. It's disappointing to see that that your your principles can be bought. Even even the most principled of them, we were applauding him for that a few years ago. Even when the shoe just crept slightly over a hundred. Or 120. We were still on board with the fact that he was keeping them lower than everybody else. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think he's fully to blame because you can. I don't think he's really to blame at all. I think if he had his way, shoes would be at a still approachable and price level. They told him he was more materials. The materials, blah blah blah. They told right. him exactly. That. But I, and I, and I and I think I think that that's I'm I'm with you completely. That's the point I'm trying to make is these players are brands in and of themselves. And while we know he's not to blame, if he doesn't do any kind of proactive marketing on his own, he will be to blame, even though we know that's not fair. Well, his proactive marketing is he's continuing to excel since he came into the league. So it's a gift mm -hmm. and a curse because the better he's become, mm -hmm. it justifies Nike raising the prices. Right. 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 Oh, which, only, which, which, again, kids, you got to understand that these folks, they, they struggle to own their own brands when they sign on. Yeah. And with the reselling value of his kicks nowadays, there's no way Nike's going to sit at that low price. Right. Right. His first three shoes had no resale value. Right. No. These, though. these will have a resale value. You'll see these at sneaker events. Yeah. No, you will, for sure. For yeah. sure. These shouldn't even be bootlegged. These look like the Grinch who sold sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Joe. This is horrible. The Grinch who stole sneakers. <laughs> this is yeah. funny. Wow. Show IDs, everyone. He's here all week. Yeah. <laughs> tip your weight, staff. <laughs> Make sure you tip the bartenders. <laughs> uh, I gotta get off this piece of uh, <laughs> All right. Please take that off screen. Please. Yeah. It's hurting us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All no right. So we have, and I know everyone is going to go in on this one. It's, it's going to be, oh, man. For to another old school reference here, another chronic, uh, old school oh. reference from the chronic. 
It is going to be a lyrical gangbang on this oh, show. Man. <laughs> oh, man. Lyrical gangbang. Wow. Yeah. L. Ugh. Ugh. As Pusha T would do. Ugh. <laughs> Here we go. The Air Trainer 360, Air Max Trainer 360 2. Medicine ball. All that made up fucking bullshit for this shit. Here we go. Look at D. He already sweat. He mad. <laughs> is, he, is he swinging like Trey from Poison Tell him why you mad, son. Tell him why you mad, son. They got that yellow, they got that yellow cake. Is he swinging like Trey from Boys in the Hood? He is. This is his Boys in the Hood moment. He's swinging like Trey, man. Swinging like Trey. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> but Trey knocked boots after that scene, remember? That's true, he did, man. After, that, <laughs> man, yeah. after, after he was grunt crying, he was good. After that scene from Boys in the Hood, Trey got it in. <laughs> yep. Yep. Tell him, D. Tell him why you're mad, son. All right, so allow me to continue to scroll through the monster. I mean, the mm. image. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what this these these sneakers? I what's the official? The the official name is the Air Max the Air Max Trainer, Trainer. sixty two medicine, medicine ball. ball. Good. Now, see, when I, I saw that like, name, I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was joking. Yeah. Just like making it up, like a run on sentence. Yeah. <laughs> You need a comma. You need a comma. You need a comma somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> I mean, the source, the source of these is Crooked Tongues, who yes. actually did these. Yeah. Yeah. Which is this um, officially a Crooked Tongue collab? They don't get a pass. No, they didn't do a collab on these. These are just where they're hitting retail. You know, they're oh. the first to, first yeah, they're, to reveal they're, they're it. Them first, yeah. So okay, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the original. You know, it, it took cues from the original Air Trainer Three. You know, sneaker medicine ball, which a lot of people actually like. Some people are hunting for. You know, yeah. they've been retro. They, they 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 came. They hit quick and gone. This they sneaker sell out every time they drop. Three sixty. You know, Air Trainer Three Sixty Two. Take hits and cues from that low version, you know, a big ass looks like a Nike Air Burst uh, airbag. The strap, four foot strap, you know, it's it, it's a trainer. Okay, I get that, but to give it the you know the resemblance of the medicine ball trainers, bad idea, yeah. bad bad idea. Mr. Yeah. Brooklyn Show, if you're with us, could you pull up the Spike Lee? Picture of him wearing these, mm. and then the, wearing know, the original version. Rather, sorry. Then I think the other thing that's going to happen is, what's the price going to be? We know, okay, we cannot know. We we can estimate this sneaker is going to be at least a hundred and twenty-five dollars or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three three sixty bottom is going to be one fifty. One fifty. Okay, so that's 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 our you know that's our gamble on the table. You know, one fifty. Why? Why not just bring out the medicine ball, you know, air trainers, and give the people what we really want versus this sneaker coming out, trying to hit, you know, you got a swoosh that looks elongated like a, I don't know, like a two dollar hooker's tongue. I, I, I mean, just like you got so much, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, got, you got so much stuff going on with this that I'm like, no, and I understand, Steve. I hear you. If you can catch it from the low, I salute you. If you could get this for like less than a hundred dollars, even better. Oh, it's gonna be less than a hundred dollars. See, I'm, you know? I'm, and that's where we actually are like two sides of the same coin. I fully agree with everything you're saying. If I can get it for the low, yeah, then then I'll get all the technology that we actually like that shouldn't be called a medicine ball. We yeah. we, we like the 360 bottom. I like the trainer four foot strap. I like the sidewall lateral protect. You know the 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 lateral protection of the rubber overlays there that where the the uh, the outsole comes up. You know um, I like the old school uh, figure eight um, uh, lace eyelets. Uh, I hate the the swoosh like you said. It's all wrong. Why would they not? Why would they do all that other stuff and not put the short swoosh in there like it should? Exactly. Be? It should be like like. The original, 
Right, and so I, I fully agree. This is not a medicine ball. It shouldn't have been called a medicine ball, and it damn sure shouldn't go for more than 100. <laughs> but uh, all the stuff that we like about the trainers, if this was just a, a Neo Retro, I'd be okay with it. But I, so I agree 100%. Except for I'm getting this at Marshall's on a low, and I'm dunking on somebody in them. <laughs> <laughs> Marshalls or Ross, okay. Or, or, or excuse me, I'm sorry, not Marshalls. I know this is a Nordstrom's rack shoe. Nordstrom, right? that's the rack, baby. Wow. This I'm sneaker. Looking, is, I'm looking I, for a recent image that where I saw um, a spike on the set of Do the Right Thing actually wearing them. Oh, oh really? On Instagram today. Somebody posted on IG earlier. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it was on. It was on IG, and it was also on. Um, also on um on one of the sneaker sites earlier today, so I'm looking for that image right now. So y'all keep gang banging this shoe. Hmm. Hold on. It's, gonna, it's I mean again, the I, I, Gilbert Arenas will actually play ball in this. He would. He would play ball in this sneaker. He would. Just, just like so would um. Uh, Mr. Mr. Nate uh, Robinson. Like, yes, thank you. Nate Robinson would play in these. I don't play. think Nate would play in these. I think he'd be willing to try just for just for looks, just for fun, summer league or or who knows. I mean, but this is that sneaker that I look at and I was like, what are they doing? What are they trying to what is it they're trying to tell us? I found it. Oh sorry. You know, Joel did awesome. it. Oh Joel did? Okay. So let me see if I can find him. Yes, it was him that did it this morning. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, he was the one who did it. Hmm. So, um, this year, 2014, is the 25th anniversary of the movie Judah. That's the picture right there. Oh, word. It's the 25th the anniversary of Do the Right Thing. How about I quit? Go back. You 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 lost it on us. There there it is right there. It's the twenty fifth anniversary of it. <laughs> this year, remember Chuck D said it on Fight the Power, nineteen eighty nine. The number another summer. It's two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Oh my God. So we're talking the twenty fifth anniversary of Do the Right Thing this year. The movie's so good, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> the movie's so them shits is broke. And <laughs> of course, it had it had monumental moments within you know the popularity of sneakers four years removed from the Air Jordan release. Um, it was big for Brooklyn. It was big for Spike. It was big for race relations, which was a powder keg all over the Northeast at that point. Can't can't I can't speak for anywhere else? Ridiculous. You can, but no, it was it was it was tough out here. When, like when that movie played. On top of all the things that were references, like out east and in Brooklyn, for people who understood it, and it was a tough enough subject for them, when that movie hit theaters out here, not only did you have a subject matter that was so foreign to Midwesterners, being New York and Brooklyn, but then on top of that, the race relations problem. On mm -hmm. top of that, you you mix all that together, and it was just it, it was more confusing than it was helpful at first. And then it later became helpful in retrospect. So yeah, it was it was real interesting. I, I saw Do the Right Thing in the theater several times, and and I mean, it, it, there's no way to not have <laughs> white friends out here. You know, there's no way to not have Italian friends out here. We have a huge Italian population, and uh, and what's funny is even at the high school I went to, <clears throat> the Italians. Considered themselves minorities, they they would get livid if you called them white. <laughs> so it was a, it was another mix because of I think even who you are as a minority is regionally based. So it was a huge thing out here. Yeah. So do the right thing. Were 25 years ago when it dropped, it was the first film of probably its magnitude like that to be sh shot on location in a hotbed city where the actual topic of the film was actually a real-life case in point of what the film was about. Mm -hmm. um, the sneaker aspect, which of course is iconic. The NBA aspect, 
the play, you know what I'm saying, between Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. Um, there's so many, you know, subplots to the issues going on in the country, both important and trivial at the time. It's so much of a slam dunk for them to just go ahead and put this shoe that's on screen out just like this and not fuck with it. Right. And just do it. Just really take your own fucking advice, Nike. <laughs> <laughs> And, and see, D, I, I, I completely feel yep. you when I'm looking at the shoe. That is not a medicine ball, but in color. In color, exactly. That's all because it, I hear you. It, the the references that they did, they didn't take far enough to be able to even call it a medicine ball. Yeah, and, for that and, matter, and that shoe and that shoe, that shoe spice one. That's a trainer three. Right. Yep. Yep. It's a Trainer 3. That's the same shoe that they put out as part of the Transformer pack, which is one of the most popular ones, the Optimus Prime uh, Trainer. Pack. Yep, the Prime, and the, the, the Prime and the Megatron. Yep. So yep. you already know that this shoe wins when you put it out with the right push behind it and, you know, the whole Whedon and Kennedy magic and everything else that they could put behind it. So why would you not give us this but you'll give us that fucking half-ass bullshit rivalry pack <laughs> and this long-ass name description bullshit, too. Why? It's a total garbage. Okay, D, let me ask you this question. Okay. With, uh, with the color being what it is and the historical reference being what it is, had they put this out in, say, a classic... Uh, trainer colorway of the black gray, mm. kind of like the the bow or the bow, trainer, yeah. Or trainer one, would it then? Not saying it would have been a slam dunk, but would that have at least taken it slightly out of the WTF category? Is it the medicine ball and the long ass name that, yeah. that kind of messes it up for you? Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Agree. Okay. Yeah, yep, because I, I feel you there. I feel you there. If they had called this a, a, a trainer one three sixty. Or, or, or just left the medicine ball out completely and put it out in a classic, you know, white, gray, and black colorway that they did with all the trainers initially, mm -hmm. with the, with the, with the, with the, the little hint of what was that seafoam green? Yep. Mm -hmm. That I think they would have been just fine. On on D screen is the original medicine ball trainer three. On show ID yep. screen is the actual real documentation of Spike wearing them on the set of Do the Right Thing. Right. Spike Lee's office is literally three blocks away from where I sit doing this show. Spike Lee is still around. Yep. He's at every net game. He's at some net games. He's easy to find. Yep. Why would it be so hard to just relive the experience of this shoe with him and just not put this fucking shoe out on the 25th anniversary of Do the Right Thing and leave that bullshit you just gave us through crooked terms somewhere else? <laughs> And oh. here, here's what here. I'll put up. Uh, I'm gonna try and do the screen share to put up what I was talking about with the colorway, and why this shoe actually looks more like a trainer one or two, and not what they're calling it. Like if that's what they went with with that color scheme, we might be talking an okay shoe. Nope, because you can't fuck with the trainer one in my eyes. <laughs> that's a 1987 classic right there too. You can't fuck with that one either. I hear you. I hear you. I'm that just saying, one right. I, that one right oh, there set off the category. That's Ooh. what set off the category. That's I hear, I hear you. What I'm saying is, I, me personally, I've stuck my foot in my mouth way too many times on a shoe like that, and then I end up kind of liking it. Like mm. I, I put the example up, the Jordan 2.0. Everybody hated that shoe. It had the red 360. When I saw it in person, oh, I'm like, you know what? The Jordan 2 itself was a piece of bullshit. Yeah. So this I can't be mad at. The Jordan so Two has been redone so many times though. Dwayne actually redid it too. Right. Right. It's yeah. called, it's it's called the new retro two when Dwayne did it. Dwayne's is killer. <laughs> the two That's has been I'm done over so many times. They just need to stop now. Right. right. Leave it alone. And right. Just go ahead. But we got yes. another WTF. Speaking of Jordan brand. Uh oh. We got we got one more for the night, and I thought we were going to end it on this medicine ball, but we so eloquently put 
why this shoe sucks. Um, we got a little bit of time to end the show on this one. Where is this? I know we've all seen it, but I'm not going to say nothing until I put it up on the screen. Then you guys are going to be like, oh, shit, son. <laughs> oh, shit, see. Y'all going to knock the water over off the table like weapons of mass destruction. What weapons of mass destruction? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came to get that all. <laughs> so here we go. Here goes the final WTF of the night. Show IDs loves this shoe. He said he's going to cop every color they drop in. <laughs> We're talking the Air Jordan 1 Jordan Shine. The Can Air Jordan 1. What are they calling The Shine? Shine. The Jordan Ooh, Shine. Ooh, if this shoe had a face, I'd punch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. It gets better. Wow. We're going to launch... At Barney's for the price of two hundred dollars. Mm, I'd slap its mama too. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. So they put a bunch of they put a bunch of holes in the Jordan One. Put it at Barney's to cut oh, it too big. They gave it a woven a woven upper. Yep. Cheers, Nike. <laughs> Cheers. They gave it a woven. Even... They put they put the um the hidden laces in there. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. Cheers. Monochromed it out. <laughs> oh man. Now, you could, get the, the, now you could get in the club with your Jordan one. Exactly. You right you could. You right you could. And Nita Heat will let you go. He <laughs> will let you in with he, it. He'd have to? Yeah, he can't stop you. Like, look, look, Playboy, I paid $200 for these shorts. <laughs> look, look, these look. for Barney, son. They ain't got no switches on them. They wove it. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I've always said that when executed right, I'm a fan of a Jordan 1 with no swoosh, a la the Dave White. Okay, okay. Because I think it represents that, you know, sentiment that Mike had about um, the swoosh being gone from his shoes because the shoes can sell on their own just based on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it speaks to that point that was made so many years ago. But sure. to do this and just like now it's like sprinkle crack on it. Make it drug related. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you said I want these in every single color. Say again? I just heard that I missed that you said I want these in every color. Yep. So that you can burn them. Oh, okay, cool. As long as we got that part right. All right. Yep, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, they, and, and, and see, they did smart with the marketing on these because they launched them first, at, at first look, in GQ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they they not, they're, not, they're not aiming at the streets, bro. It's a lifestyle sneaker. It, it, it's beyond that. Because, like, like I said, I, I, I still recall the, the story of when I'm walking through the Venetian uh, out in Vegas. And, and their shops, and then in uh, the Palazzo and their shops, and they ain't the stratosphere, bruh. So you ain't you ain't seeing the regular stuff. They they got shoes at a price point and at a style where where their expected audience for that shoe is not us. And this is not meant for us. We just happen to find it. I see you. Yep. Sure. Uh, yes, sir. Because Jordan Lisa just said she think the black pair is cute. Who said that? Lisa. Lisa right hey. here talking about the black pair is cute. So you told her she could never come on the show ever again, right? <laughs> yeah. She talking about the black pair is cute. Never. Ever, 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 ever. Must be her feet. <laughs> tell Lisa, just because she might know the guy who did this monstrosity don't mean you have to like it. She laughing. <laughs> she laughing. <laughs> the dong. <laughs> Who hit the? <laughs> she the first woman who never appeared on the show and is banned from the show. <laughs> She's our version of Matt Damon. You saying? Oh, I'm sorry, Matt Damon couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> She's our first Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So so, all right. So this is the final WTF for the night. There's a subplot to what we've been showcasing from Nike tonight. It looked like lanyard sneakers. Who's? Lanyard. Lanyard. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You know you make the Chinese staircase, the bomb? Yep. Ah. Yep. 
You could take these sneakers apart and put them on the back of Jan Sports. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I'm putting this out on Twitter. Bonus WTF for the night. Let's see what people come back with. If you're watching on and, and you want to comment on Twitter, use the hashtag OG Sneaker Talk. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, if these sneakers were made by Hermes, you could bust sell these for nine hundred dollars. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's the, but that's, that's the audience. Bad. That I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up, show. That's the audience they're going for. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same look. That's a bargain to that audience. Oh, I can get that look for two hundred dollars, Buffy. Let's go to Barney's. Yep. <laughs> Buffy, let's go to Barney's. One red pair, so you know, it's whatever. Yeah, but 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 the disturbing, the disturbing thing. I guess not for us because none of this shit is made for us anyway. We have to remember. We we want to let everybody know out there too. We're fully aware of the fact that. A lot of this shit is not made for us. We know that. We get it. We're not looking for this stuff to be made for us. We totally like what we like, and you're not going to change our minds at this point. Believe that. You really fucking aren't. So we know this shit isn't made for us. But to see the shit that you guys allow to go on, Target Demo, is crazy. Are you really surprised? I'm not surprised by anything after Jeremy Scott. Like, well, what up, what up? Well, Je you're, you're, you're totally everything. right. Totally right with, with, with what Jeremy Scott did, like just picking shit up out his base. There's an audience for everything. Did you see his work for Mosquito now? No, I haven't. Oh, gee. <laughs> He's holding his head. Please wait, wait. Please let me find Jeremy Scott Massacre for Mosquito or whatever. But, 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 but have you seen how fast, and, and this is the part that we haven't addressed yet in all of this, have you seen how fast the price increases are coming now? Mm -hmm. It's not the twenty, thirty dollar jump anymore. Mm -hmm. It's fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. It's fifty dollars. It's seventy five dollars from the original, or from when last released, or from when last they tried to bullshit you. Mm -hmm. Target demo. Keep wait, saying. Wait, wait. Keep saying that to him until they understand. Target demo. Target demo. <laughs> we're talking to you. <laughs> Target demo. Yeah. You know who we're talking to. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you all see this? Yo, that's Jeremy Scott from Moschino? Oh. SpongeBob? Come on. Yo, this dude playing. just going to keep... He just gonna keep ripping until he get busted again. Hold on, look yeah, at this one. Up. Wait, it gets better. Oh my goodness. McDonald's? Ah! <laughs> no, wait, that's not. Come on, that's, that that's not McDonald's. That's, that's, that's Please McDonald's. tell me that's. Tell no, me that's, that's, that's McDonald's. That's coming to America. <laughs> tell me that's Photoshop. This is on MTV style, so this oh is not so goodness. bullshit thing. Jeremy Scott inaugural runway collection for Moschino. Dude, and this dude just got busted for stealing from exactly. the skateboard culture. <laughs> Document it. So we got this. Look, it says over 20 billion served. Hey, hey, we just got. I just got a tweet from the size 15 king correcting me on price. I said 200. That Jordan Shine is 400 dollars. I will fight it. I will fight it. Audience, I will fight it. It's the audience, and they're gonna tell you it's made in Italy. I'm wow. punching that shoe. I'm gonna go into Barney's and I'm gonna punch so that what shoe. What is this? An '80s rock? An '80s rap video? Is just like, is this girl over here, Leah, or oh, boy? <laughs> and this is girls want to have fun in the middle. And I don't See, know. What but I, I can, I can live with. And, and the last one, a, a, a show. The last one is ASAP Rocky. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> I can, I can. <laughs> I can look at the river. Backup dancers. Oh my god, that is rhythm nation right there. Backup dancers, and um, and then we go down to SpongeBob, I believe. Oh, this is the this, work. Yo, that's SpongeBob that's for for Moschino. That is like straight up SpongeBob. Yo, I know a little girl out there who would love this. <laughs> I mean, why he just use Hello Kitty? <laughs> no, how about this one? So you see the cheese it's on the left, I believe. Yeah. Oh my God, come Yo, on! Did he really, he really go Hershey's on us? 
Gummy Hershey's chocolate. And Hershey's Annie, chocolate. Annie, Annie put a sister in the dress. And oh, yeah. Milk and chocolate. Jesus. Yo, Jeremy Scott is that dude. Wow. Yo, that dude got a pair of brass balls Yo, for real, let me bro. tell you. Remember how Jay-Z said I could sell water to a well? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Scott could sell water to a well because he is the obvious ultimate hustler. Yo, you got to put the SpongeBob collection back up again. <laughs> oh, he is the ultimate hustler. Man. For fall, winter 2014. Yeah, I don't know how y'all, this, listen, this is every news thing on TV. Oh, my God. Bruh, that's what we call hitting the hole hard. This yeah. bruh saw an opening, and he hit the throttle. Like, <laughs> I'm going to do it till they, I'm going to do it till they put me in. Now, hey, I'm going to ask some of my friends at Nickelodeon about this, because... So listen, my Rugrats and Recess shit clothing line is coming out soon for women. I'm going to have Thundercats for men, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's a Ninja Turtle movie coming out. I got to jump on that real quick. I don't even know... Oh, here's Nutrition Facts. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Jeremy Scott is wild. Yo, only thing your man need is a warning label. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Yo, he's going to do it too. He's going to do it. Yo, it says contains fat, high fructose, corn syrup, <laughs> and fat. Yo, I'm sorry. Oh, this is hilarious. He took the label yo, off. Of yo, no, yo, you know what that is? That's the back of the 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 um. It looks like the back of the Pet Pepperidge Farm um goldfish. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, yo, it is. Get out of here. Ninety percent fat. Cause over here look cheese flavors. Come this on. This dude is seriously just daring people to come get it. Let's come go. get me. <laughs> All I'm top saying, of, top of the world, world man. Top no of the matter where this sneaker industry take me, I can't do an interview with that dude. I'm telling y'all for future reference, me and him can't be like sitting across from each other because I'm just gonna have a joke. It's nothing. It's not gonna be serious. I just have to be quiet. That man, I'm a. Hey, I i can not I'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and copy. I have to tell you, there's one time. There's hey. one time I did side with him. And I ain't no Jeremy Scott fan at all of any of this, but when he did. The shoes with the shackles. Oh yeah, with the chain. Yeah. That that were that were really based on my pet monster. Yeah, and my pet monster got them twisted. No, no, I understand people took it the wrong way, but even the right way is still an ugly, dumbass sneaker. Well, I'm good with it being ugly, but all of the politics that came into play that led to Adidas canceling that shoe, I couldn't stop. Oh yeah, yeah, no, nah, that, that was wrong. And you know what it is? It was double edged. It was. I was glad it was canceled, but it was canceled for the wrong reasons. Right. And. I was still glad it wasn't out. I was like, yeah, listen. Big, you, and, and you're right, I'm glad it wasn't out, because I can only imagine how that shoe would have been worn. And it would have been a monstrosity on these streets. You are absolutely right about that. Oh, wait, I'm reading this. So, there were cheese nips, gummy bears, popcorn and beer, flaming hot Cheetos, and Jordan Dunn and a giant mosquito, mosquito fried Hershey bar. So, we only see the gummy bears. Cheese nips and chocolate bar, but there was also flaming Cheetos, flaming hot Cheetos. Wow. So I don't know if it was a man in the flaming hot Cheetos or a feminine man in flaming hot Cheetos or a woman, but the crazy shit about it is, with yeah. this shit on, they were expecting model professionally. <laughs> <laughs> they had to I do. I know how these women. You know this? These women, you know, can't wait to do a show. These models, it's like you're gonna do a mosquito that. And then, can you imagine the first thing? Yeah, so put this on. What? Yeah. 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 I'm paying you a lot of money. Put on this Popeye's fried yeah. chicken box. You need the skinniest model because she's going to wear nutrition facts. Um, <laughs> come here, Darkie. You're going to wear the Hershey bar. Darkness. <laughs> Girl, you're going to be SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, that's horrible. All right, enough of that. I can't give him any more, Sean. I'm sorry. I got to take that off. No, I'm glad you shared that just to make yeah. the point. Of to further the point of, of the, the target people. audience wearing God knows what. Yeah, target audience. We're talking. Okay, about I'm not surprised anymore by nothing. Nothing. Well, after that, my my level of being surprised has 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 decreased too. <laughs> after seeing that, because you know what it is even though that's runway clothing, I guarantee you somehow we're gonna see somebody with that somewhere. No, I don't know. Don't we'll say that. No, we're not. Yeah, no, we're we not. Nope. I'm not gonna even let you rock with that. Nope. <laughs> nope. I won't. 
you know, shirts to a number of the bloggers that attended the show. Oh, before. God. Lisa just told me they gave complimentary shirts to a number of the bloggers that attended that show. And, and that's all Lisa, it tell Lisa that's, if she got one of those shirts, we fight. Oh, and that's the and that's where they that's where they gain their steam, man. Is they yeah. give that stuff to all these bloggers and tell them to go write something a little bit positive, no matter how much bullshit they think it is, and then it runs. No, we not hey, show. Why you drink a muscle milk, show? Why you drink a muscle milk? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm in New Jersey. First of all, let me tell you. She doesn't have a corner store. She has a 7-Eleven. And there's nothing remotely healthy in that place. <laughs> Except only thing you can get is muscle milk and water. Everything in there was 11% juice. 10% juice. I couldn't even get a Nantucket orange and pineapple. Mm. You, drank that, you drank that purple stuff? No. <laughs> Sugar, Why you drink a muscle milk, show? Sugar, water, purple. Why you was gone from the show for a while, show? <laughs> that was the toilet run. That was the first one. <laughs> I didn't want to share it with y'all, but <laughs> and when I came back, she was like, "Paper said you gonna get these in every color." I was like, "Hold up, let's turn the camera back on." <laughs> <laughs> and, nah, that's that. Oh man. So that's episode number two hundred and ninety-seven. We've had a wealthy, healthy dose of WTF tonight. Mm mm. We've had um, news of Jason Mark going national with his cleaner. Once again, congrats to Jason Mark. Yes, indeed. He's been supporting us and holding us down. <laughs> Shout out and, you know, best wishes and blessings and positive vibes from all over the place to Stuart Scott, who is still yeah. battling, you know, you know, recovering from cancer and still doing his job to the best of his ability almost every damn day. Um, shout out to Kevin and Andrew. CGS4 is back on 622. Can't wait to hit Cleveland again. Shout out to Kadoma, getting things set up for the Milwaukee Sneaker Summit on March 29th. For more details on that, hit sneakersummit.com. Um, also, if you want info on CGS4, um, the email address is info at clevelandsgotsold.org. <laughs> So the shoes we talked about, we talked about the Anatomic Spawn Stephen Curry PE that dropped today as an East Bay exclusive, the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo, the KD6 Elite, which ended up being a WTF at the end of the day as courtesy of our Soul Doctors, and the NB1500 Seamless. Shout out to King Griffey Jr. on Instagram once again for that. And the WTFs tonight were the Nike Rivalry Pack. Push it. <coughs> um, the Nike Air Max Trainer 362 Medicine Ball. Push it. <coughs> Somebody hold D. Somebody hold D back. He don't yeah. need no cases. And and we rounded out the trio with the Jordan Shine that is going to be dropping at Barney's and then a few other places for a whopping four hundred dollars. Shout out to size fifteen king. So. Oh, can I say one thing, though? Yes, sir. Jeremy Scott, I know I'm mean to you, but you are the ultimate hustler. You need to be on, like, a Donald Trump show or something. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that man can hustle his ass off. <laughs> hustle. He done pimped the game. He, like, when 50 Cent said Ja Rule was singing and did sing for three albums. <laughs> you are the 50 Cent of fashion. <laughs> All right, back to y'all. And we, we can't forget, um, just to put on radar, um, this Sunday that passed, this Sunday, this Sunday that recently passed, let's just say, March 9th, was the 17th anniversary of the passing of Notorious B.I.G. Mm. Murder is still unsolved, despite tons of leads and a whole lot of things that, you know, point in the direction of finding a killer, but a killer has never been found. Um, peace and blessings to Valletta Wallace, who, you know, 17 years later, you know, still holding out faith that one day um, the truth of the story will come to light and justice will be served. And she still holds her head high and dignified despite um, being put through the system in all different ways, shapes, and forms. Um, but 17 years ago, this past Sunday, 17 years. So, 
That's it for episode number 297, y'all. We'll be back next week for episode 298. Got a topic you want us to discuss on the show? Email us at info at OSD Live. You know where to catch the entire OSD crew and Soul Doctors on social media networks. We're here, we're there, we're everywhere. We're not mythical beasts. We're not hard to find. Um, so by all means, you can hit us through whatever the best way possible to talk to us. Um, what else have we got, D. Wells? We got a lot of stuff in store, but episode 298 will be next week. We'll be back on it. We'll be back on it. And, and social studies, you know, OSD sneaker event. We got lots of good stuff to report on next episode. Yep. Man, until then, you know, we, we make sure we let everyone, we make sure all this, the sorties know where to go each and every week to get your sneaker news because OSD is that place. The Soul Doctors and the Sorleys, we talk, we represent you because we are just like you. So, APL, holla at us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, good, yeah. Day, good night. Yep. So y'all be good. Y'all be safe. Make sure to tell the people that you love that you love them. Come back and walk with us, talk with us next week. You want to reach out and touch us? Hit us at info at OSD Live or on all social media platforms at OSD Live. Until then, y'all be safe. Peace and pounds. We are up, up, and and we say, what up, Jesse? What up, Jesse? We what out. Up, Jesse? We what out. Up, Jesse? APL, holla at us. <laughs> Is this page of me at 546 in the morning? Crack the dawn.